I've already done an analysis of footage with the Mini 3 Pro, but the quality has constantly improved recently, so an updated version was due. In the meantime, DJI has released a more affordable model, named simply Mini 3. So in this video I will catch two birds with one stone, a full checkup of the improved footage quality of the Mini 3 Pro and a comparison with the new model in terms of video quality and functionalities. The engine, body, gimbal and camera in the two models are exactly the same, so there is no difference of in-flight performance, speed, stability and wind resistance. The sensor size is 1 over 1.3 inches and the video resolution is 4K. The new model is approximately $200 cheaper than the Pro version. There are several price options according to the controller and the combo options. You will find all the prices in the description below. The difference in price is due to several functionalities missing in the new model. Most of these features relate to video. The basic Mini 3 is not supplied with the three-directional obstacle sensor of the Pro model. The lack of an obstacle detection system is a major limitation in terms of safety, not only for beginners. When shooting footage professionally, in all different conditions, the excellent APAS system of the Mini 3 Pro has saved my drone from crashing on many occasions. It is a crucial feature that by itself might justify the difference in price between the two models for many users. Another difference is video bitrate. In the Mini 3 it has been reduced to 100 Mbps from 150 in the Pro model. A higher bitrate means less compression in the video file and thus more info retained and better performance in heavy post-processing. But the 100 Mbps in the Mini 3 is already a relatively high value and the difference does not seem to affect image quality in the normal mode. The Mini 3 has a frame rate of up to 30 frames per second at 4K resolution versus 60 frames per second for the Mini 3 Pro. This means that with the cheaper model it's not possible to apply any real slow motion. It is certainly a limitation, as slowing down the footage is an excellent way to add interest especially when filming close to a moving subject, but probably not a deal breaker for most casual users. The Mini 3 doesn't have the three intelligent flight modes grouped under the name Focus Track, Active Track, Spotlight and Point of Interest. This is a very important limitation for two reasons. First of all, there are no tracking capabilities and this is a very popular functionality for following moving targets or for vlogging. Also, using the modes Spotlight and Point of Interest, it is possible to maintain a static target in the same position in the frame, while performing all sorts of moves. I use these modes constantly and I find them invaluable for producing flawless cinematic footage. Master Shots has also been taken away from the Mini 3. The only automated model available in the basic model is Quick Shots. The Mini 3 doesn't have hyperlapse, a feature that I use a lot, but it relates more for photography than to video, so I will analyze it in another video comparing photography with the two models. There are a few other less important differences between the two models, but they will not impact most users' experience. The maximum ISO value in the Mini 3 is 3200 versus 6400 for the Mini 3 Pro, but such a high value is not really needed with the extreme f1.7 aperture of the lens. The cheaper model is not compatible with the RC Pro, the luxury controller priced at around $1000. This will only interest users who already own the RC Pro and use it with another DJI drone. The transmission system in the Mini 3 is Ogusynx 2, which displays a resolution of 720p on the controller, versus Ocusync 3 with a 1080p resolution for the Pro model. The footage on the controller looks certainly crispier with the Pro model, but it is not a deal breaker. The only major flaw I find in the Mini 3 Pro is the signal transmission in areas with strong interference. This is probably due to the antenna housed inside the arms. And in fact, with the basic Mini 3, DJI has added a couple of feet at the end of the arms, where the antenna are now housed, like in the Mini 2. 
Even though the Pro model has a more recent transmission system, my impression so far is that the basic model has a slightly better signal due to the location of the antennas. But the quality of the signal varies a lot according to the geographic location. There is a department where the more affordable Mini 3 outperforms the Pro model. Battery life. Due to the energy saved by the lack of obstacle avoidance and other functionalities, the Mini 3 has an announced battery life of 38 minutes, or 51 with the special plus battery, versus 34 minutes for the Pro model, or 47 with the plus battery. Both models are able to rotate the gimbal to shoot video and photos in vertical orientation, a big selling point for users active on social media. Let's watch some footage in normal mode, the only one available in the basic Mini 3. Normal is an 8-bit mode to be used right out of the camera with very little or no color grading. The results are exactly the same in the two models, and this is not surprising since they have the same camera. The quality is remarkable, although a slight increase of contrast and saturation is needed. I find a slight tendency towards yellowish tones, so I set the white balance just above 5000 kelvins, while with other models I prefer around 5600. Lowering the angle of the camera to take the sky out of the equation, the detailed color rendition are really good. Footage taken in normal mode with mod model is excellent for social media use. An area where the two models suffer a bit compared to the R2S and the Mavic 3 is footage shot in the direction of the sun. The dynamic range is certainly not as extended as in the more expensive models, and this is not surprising due partly to the smaller sensor and partly to marketing reasons. When exposing to preserve the highlight, the shadows remain too dark, and there is some flare near the position of the sky. Not too bad, but again, not as good as with the bigger models. A department where the two mini models really shine, for giving the pun, is night footage. Thanks to the extremely wide aperture of 1.7, the performance in low light is astonishing. He can even rival the one of the mighty Mavic 3. In footage taken in vertical format, there is practically no difference in quality compared to the traditional format. The Mini 3 Pro has the 10-bit flat profile color mode Disney alike, meant for serious color grading. A 10-bit profile can display over 1 billion colors, versus around 16 million for an 8-bit one. The wider color spectrum prevents color banding in uniform area and other artifacts. Since this in alike is more solid in post-processing, it is a better choice to adapt the footage to the specific color range of a project. This profile has a wider dynamic range, 
and it is meant to perform better in situations with a lot of difference in luminosity. In the first version of the Mini 3 Pro, I found this in a like a bit disappointing. At the time it was an 8-bit profile and the shadows were a bit crushed, but it has been constantly improved by firmware updates and it is now a true 10-bit mode. So, for most users, I would recommend going for the Pro model, if the budget allows for it. There are a host of very useful features that are certainly worth the $200 difference in price. Click on this link to watch my analysis of photography with the Mini 3 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.